So for 9.5, we're going right to our note cards. So if you're absent and watching this video, you should find your bright yellow note card. And we're going to be working with our fourth kind of transformation called the dilation. What a dilation does is it either enlarges something, blows it up, makes it bigger, or it reduces something or shrinks it or makes it smaller. All right. And the dilation is the one of the four that's not an isometry because the figures change in size. So we're writing this stuff on a note card. So today we're going to mathematically not slide things, not flip them, not turn them. We're going to roll them up and we are going to shrink them. Okay? And we're going to do it with math. And I bet you guys probably could already tell me what math is going to do it. For example, how tall are you, Avery? She's 5'4". If I wanted to blow her up to double her size, what would I do with her height? Multiply it by what? 2. If I wanted to shrink her to half her height, what would I multiply by? A half. Yeah, so it's so common sense that to blow things up or to enlarge them. Alright, so the next thing. Why is that not? Okay, so the scale factor, and again, I know mine's in red. I don't know if you guys have a highlighter or not or something, but you might want to then circle these keywords. But a scale factor is the number that you multiply by to get the image. Sometimes in math we call that K. So it talks about K. So like if I wanted to double Avery's height, I'd multiply it by 2 and she'd get twice as tall. If I wanted to make her a third of her height, I'd multiply by one third. So you're going to be multiplying. Now, if I multiplied her by one, she's not going to blow up or shrink. She's going to stay by four. So one does nothing. Okay. So one of your quizzes questions today, because you're going to be doing quizzes for homework instead of the worksheet, um, is going to say, what math operation do you use for a dilation or multiplication? Okay. Adding makes you move around, right? So the scale factor is what you multiply by. You're going to be asked whether something's an enlargement or a reduction. If that scale factor is bigger than 1, even if it's 1.01, .01, things will get bigger. Not by much. The scale factor is a million. It's going to get gigantic. But anytime we have a scale factor that's bigger than 1, it's going to blow it up. When our scale factor is less than 1, it's going to shrink it. So like a third, 0 0.9, 0 0.6, 5 sixths, right? Anything top heavy will blow it up. Like if they say on your quizzes the scale factor is 6 fifths, you're going to go, that's bigger than 1. It's going to enlarge it. Did I give you enough time? I'm going to wait for pencils to be stopped here before I do the next part. So we've got some vocabulary on here. A dilation. Blows things up or shrinks them. The scale factor is the number that blows them up or shrinks them. Why do I not have an equal to 1 on here? Will you listen to me? What will a scale factor equaling 1 do? It just keeps it the same size and it does not do anything to it. Okay, So we don't have an equal to 1 on there. All right. So next up, when they're graphed. So if you have to graph them, if a point's at 2, 2, and the scale factor is 3, it's going to go to 6, 6. You just multiply by that number. It's really, really, really easy. You see why I'm shrinking the notes down? Dilations are the easiest of the four. Whatever the scale factor is, you multiply every single point by it, and it will shrink it or blow it up. And we'll go do a sample in a little bit. But if it's already graphed and you have to figure out the scale factor, that can be tricky. You have to be careful. So it says to get the scale factor when both are graphed. You're going to have to decide, did this blow up or did this shrink? So I have a generic triangle there. And right now, you have no idea whether I took the pink and sent it through an enlargement machine or whether I took the gray and sent it through a shrinking machine. You have no idea what I did, correct? I had to mathematically tell you by marking that picture up what I did. There's a couple ways to do that. You ready? I'm going to call this point O. It's actually called the center of dilation, but I'm going to call that point O. There's a couple things I can do to tell you whether it blew up or it shrank. 
I can merely just label the points. I'm going to call this A, and I want you to as well, and I'm going to have you call this A prime. Now you know for sure whether the pink blew up or the gray shrunk. And I want you to use your math knowledge about what those little markings mean. Did the pink blow up or did the gray shrink? The gray shrunk. How do you know that? Go ahead, Mike. Yes, you look to the prime. So when you're doing your quizzes and you're trying to decide did this blow up or shrink, your eye should go from the pre-image or the original to the prime, and you're going to go, it shrunk. But you're also going to have to not only know whether it shrunk or whether it enlarged, but we also are going to have to know what the scale factor is. There's a couple ways to do that. You just can't be sloppy. It's always the prime length over the original length, and it depends on how they're graphed. They're similar. Do you remember what similar means from another chapter? Yeah, Mark? It means like it's, it's not like even, but, it's, but it means that they are proportional. Yes, all the sides are in proportion. So if you can just grab one pair and find the scale factor, everything comes with it. It's like if I put Avery through the incredible shrinking machine and I set it to one fifth, right? Everything will go to a fifth that size. Or my machine is broke, correct? So some people last hour say, well, how do I know which sides to graph? I said, as long as they're corresponding, it doesn't matter. So I could deal with the lefts of the triangles, the hypotenuses of the triangles, or the bottoms. When they're graphed on graph paper, which length do you think is the hardest to find? The lefts, the bottoms, or the hypotenuses? Hypotenuses need distance formula, so I'd say avoid that. But if you want to be a glutton for punishment, go ahead. They all shrink the same way. So there needs to be some numbers on here. So I'm going to go put a 3 on this one. And I'm going to put a 3 on this one. And this is where you have to be very, very, very careful because, what? What did you say? Okay. You have to be really, really careful when you say what the scale factor is on one like this. Because I put the prime length, which is three, from this is three long, but the original length before I shrunk it was not three. What was the original length? Six. Okay? If you did three over three, you'd have one, and that doesn't make sense because one won't shrink it. So what I'm telling you by this is that everything is half as long. Does that make sense? So don't put this on your note card, but if this is graphed in your quizzes, something like this, and then there's this over here, first of all, you're going to have to decide if it blew up or shrunk. And that's going to be dependent on how they labeled these. So let, I want you guys just to let everyone look up here right now. Did that blow up or did it shrink? It blew up. You look to the prime. Then to decide the scale factor, you have to grab any pair of sides. Right? So you just grab a pair and you say, well, blew up, and you do the prime length over the original. So that would, no, nope, two thirds would shrink it. This would be three halves. All right? So prime length over the original. What I mean by prime length is this one over that one. And it blew up. Three over two or one and a half was the scale factor. All right? I think that's it. Okay. Ready? I've really condensed the notes. Are you all right with that? <laughs> all right. Were you listening? It looked like they were right, Michelle. I think it's pretty easy. I do too. So I, I really shrunk it down for you. Your quizzes had set them to unlimited attempts. So I had two last hour so I suggest do it again. Because there's 18. And if you get less than, I'd say, 14 out of 18, you should, you should really do it again. I'm going to enter it as an 18-point assignment. So if you're happy with your 16 out of 18, don't do it again. But I even have enough time built in where I think you can do it twice if you're not happy with your original score. So to access the quizzes, you go to Schoology. There's two ways to access it. Off our daily slide where it says link, or there's also a quizzes link at the bottom. All right? You'll be in all different, the questions are jumbled, so you can't really work with a partner. Um, 
and I want to see your score when you're done. So when you're done, raise your hand, and I'm going to see your score, and I'm going to suggest you either for sure don't redo it, or you decide if you want to, or I might say, yeah, you, you should really redo that, because I cut the notes way down, so I want to make sure there's enough time. So we're going to go to Schoology, and you can locate it on today's slide. Uh-oh. I think I need to refresh here. So that's last week. Yep, here we go. So you can either go to today's slide where it says link here, or you can go down to where it says quizzes down on the bottom. And it'll send you in. I'm going to stop recording. So if you're watching this because you were absent, I have the quiz quizzes open till Friday just for that purpose. So I